The electrical equipment in a plant normally receives power from an electrical distribution system. An electrical distribution system consists of components that bring power into the plant, convert the power to usable voltages, distribute the power throughout the plant, and protect equipment from damage. Since you're likely to work with electrical equipment on a regular basis, you need to understand how the components in an electrical distribution system function. Some of the main components in a plant's electrical distribution system are transformers. Transformers increase or decrease voltage from one electrical circuit to another. By doing so, they enable an electrical distribution system to provide different voltages to different types of equipment. All transformers work on the principle of electromagnetic induction. The application of this principle enables power to be transferred from one circuit to another, even though there's no physical connection between the circuits. The transformers used in electrical distribution systems operate on alternating current, or AC. Alternating current gets its name from the fact that it reverses direction periodically. In fact, it reverses many times per second. It's easier to understand this characteristic if we look at this graph, which shows how AC voltage would look plotted over time. As the graph indicates, AC voltage increases in a positive direction until it reaches its maximum positive value. Then it returns to zero. Increases in a negative direction until it reaches its maximum negative value. Then returns to zero again. In fact, this cycle of increasing and decreasing voltage values repeats many times per second. To see how this happens, we'll use this illustration of an AC circuit that contains a transformer. The transformer is represented by these two coils of wire called windings. The circuit can be divided into two halves or sides. This side is the primary side. It consists of components that handle power coming into the transformer. In this circuit, the primary side includes an AC power supply, which is represented by this symbol, a switch, and one of the transformer coils called the primary winding. The other side of the circuit is called the secondary side. The secondary side components handle power leaving the transformer. In this circuit, the secondary side includes the other coil of the transformer, which is called the secondary winding, and a load, which in this case is an ammeter. The ammeter indicates current flow in amps through the secondary side of the circuit. During operation, the switch is closed to energize the primary side of the circuit. This causes current to flow from the AC power supply through the switch and the primary winding of the transformer and back to the power supply. As current flows through the primary winding, a magnetic field develops around the winding. The magnetic field is represented here by a series of lines called lines of magnetic flux. The nature of the alternating current that passes through the primary winding causes the magnetic field to expand and collapse repeatedly. As the magnetic field expands and collapses, the flux lines cut across the secondary winding. This induces a voltage in the secondary winding and causes current to flow through the secondary side of the circuit. The ammeter detects the current flow and its pointer provides a visual indication. As we've just seen, alternating current creates an expanding and contracting magnetic field which induces voltage and enables a transformer to work. Now the output voltage from a transformer depends on the ratio of the number of turns of wire in the primary winding to the number of turns of wire in the secondary winding. This turns ratio determines whether the transformer increases or decreases voltage and by how much. For example, if there are more turns of wire in the secondary winding than in the primary winding, the output voltage will be higher than the input voltage. In other words, the transformer will increase or step up the voltage. On the other hand, if there are more turns in the primary winding than in the secondary winding, the output voltage will be lower than the input voltage. 
In this case, the transformer will decrease or step down the voltage. Different kinds of transformers can be used to increase or decrease voltage from one electrical circuit to another. The components that make up these transformers can vary as well. Let's take a look at some basic transformer components now. We'll start with this typical substation transformer. Electricity enters the top of the transformer through power cables. Bushings are used to insulate the cables from the transformer casing. The casing of the transformer provides a housing for the internal parts. Inside the transformer casing are the windings. The windings are usually mounted on an iron core which concentrates the magnetic field produced in the windings. Besides insulating the windings, the oil also cools the windings, which can produce a lot of heat during normal operation. Some oil-cooled transformers have radiators to make the cooling process more efficient. In the arrangement illustrated here, there's a natural circulation of oil. As the oil picks up heat from the windings, its density decreases, causing it to rise. The warmer oil enters the top of the radiators, where its heat is transferred through the radiators to the surrounding air. As a result, the oil becomes cooler and more dense. The cooler oil sinks to the bottom of the radiators, then re-enters the transformer, where it can pick up more heat from the windings. Some oil-cooled transformers use mechanical devices to aid in cooling. For example, this transformer has a set of fans that move air through the radiators to help transfer the oil's heat to the surrounding air. Transformers can also have oil pumps. They create a forced circulation of oil through the transformer and its radiators. Now, not all transformers use oil to cool their windings. For example, this transformer is air-cooled. It has a set of fans that blow the air that's heated by the windings out of the transformer casing. Screens at the bottom of the transformer let cool air in to replace the heated air. As an operator, you may be responsible for periodically inspecting the transformers at your plant. Inspecting transformers at regular intervals can help in detecting problems before they become serious. An important part of transformer inspections is knowing and following all applicable safety procedures. Safety is an important consideration whenever electrical equipment is involved. Generally, equipment or connections that can cause an electric shock are located out of reach. Equipment or connections that can be reached are often protected by shields or cages. These devices help prevent personnel from coming into contact with energized equipment. Fences are sometimes installed around equipment such as transformers to prevent unauthorized entry. But keep in mind that with or without protective devices, contact with electrical equipment may not be safe. Even low voltage equipment can cause injuries. And energized transformers often use high enough voltages to cause death if the proper procedures aren't followed. There are a number of general checks that should be made during a transformer inspection. For example, if there are more turns of wire in the secondary winding than in the primary winding, the output voltage will be higher than the input voltage. In other words, the transformer will increase or step up the voltage. On the other hand, if there are more turns in the primary winding than in the secondary winding, the output voltage will be lower than the input voltage. In this case, the transformer will decrease or step down the voltage. During the inspection, if any loose or broken wires are noticed, they should be reported right away. Also, the affected area should be kept clear until the problem has been corrected. The casing of an oil-cooled transformer should be checked for leaks and signs of corrosion that can result in leaks. A good place to check is the joints where piping is connected to the casing. When inspecting the transformer's radiators, remove any paper or debris that might be blocking the radiators and interfering with cooling. Monitoring a transformer's gauges can help you detect potential problems before they get serious. Oil-cooled transformers often have gauges for oil flow, oil temperature, and oil level. Now, if a transformer uses fans to help in cooling, be sure to check them for proper operation as well. 
excessive vibration or unusual noise may be a warning sign of a problem with the fans. If you see any abnormal indications, report them. In this topic, we examined the basic operating principles of a transformer. We looked at some major transformer components, and we saw some operator duties associated with transformer inspections. Now try some practice questions related to this material. One type of component that's found throughout a plant's electrical distribution system is a circuit breaker. Circuit breakers serve as protective devices, and they also provide a way to isolate electrical equipment from a source of power. When it functions as a protective device, a circuit breaker helps prevent excessive current from damaging circuits and equipment. A circuit breaker is able to do this because it has electrical contacts that open or trip to interrupt current flow to a circuit. When it functions as an isolating device, a circuit breaker is tripped by personnel to isolate equipment from a source of electric power. This allows equipment to be locked out of service so that it can be worked on safely. Here's one type of circuit breaker that's sometimes used in electrical systems. It has an on-off switch. When the switch is in the on position, the contacts are closed and current flows through them. When the switch is in the off position, the contacts are open and current is unable to flow to the load that the breaker is protecting.